All right, Selena, the question that everyone seems to be asking these days, right? It's the hot question, and it's this. It's very controversial. What is a woman? A woman is a biologically female human being made in the image of God for his glory and for the good of humanity. That's my answer. <laughs> Final answer. Stick into it. All right. Well, what you just said was extremely controversial. And why are you so hateful? <laughs> just kidding. I will tell you on the other side. You know what? We're making light <laughs> of it. This is a very, it's a very weighty topic. Uh, it's, it's, it's all the rage right now because our society has lost its mind. We've lost our collective mind, okay? The pandemic and all the stuff that happened over 2020 all the way till now. All that stuff plus this, the, late, the latest kind of wave of gender ideology is really kind of disorienting. And so our goal for today, it's, it's going to be a one, uh, it's the first ever Fierce Marriage, Fierce Parenting mashup, okay? So I'm, I represent the marriage side, Selena's on the parenting <laughs> side. I'm kidding, we're both on both sides. <laughs> um, and today we hope to kind of I don't know, give you permission to really press into your identity as someone who's created in God's image mm-hmm. and hopefully give you some language around specifically for women, the roles that you have as a mother, the roles you have as a wife, to really own it, enjoy it, and then use that as a light in your community mm-hmm. to share the gospel and to share love with people in your community. So with that said, we'll see you on the other side. It's funny though, you say love, and I'm like, I don't even think our culture defines love <laughs> the way it's, there's many definitions. We've done many episodes on love. Interesting. That's, so, not, that's not a connection that we've made. So when, real quick, when we wrote Fierce Marriage, yes. I did a study and I looked I, I looked all far and wide for how do people without a Christian worldview define love. Define love. <laughs> and there, was, there were as many answers as there were people. Because there is no objective definition of love outside of a Christian worldview. Right. When you when you start saying that God is God and his word is authoritative, then you start to wrap your arms around what love might be. And here's a hint. It's, it has very little to, to do with how you feel. Mm. It has a lot to do with how you act. And so the loss of that, the loss not just of love, but the objective standard of truth has led us to where we are today. And so we're here today to kind of talk through that a little bit and uh, hopefully encourage you while not making too light of a serious topic, but also not taking it too seriously as well. (laughs) So here we go. Striking the balance. So Selena, you said this very controversially. A woman is a biological female who is made in the image of God for his glory and for the good of humanity. Mm -hmm. We we hashed that definition out. It took us about two seconds to hash it out, but we wrote it down (laughs) because we didn't want to mess it up. We didn't want to mess it up. Because it's important these days. Um, And so that is a burden that we've, we've kind of been caring for a few, I don't, I'll say months now, we've been thinking about this idea of what does it mean to be uh, a woman by design? Well, because we are in the marriage and family space. Yes. And so how can we how can we not answer this fundamental question? How can we ignore uh, the foundation on which our covenant sort of exists, right? We believe, and you can look this up on our, what is it, our beliefs page or whatever? Sure, on our website, yeah. Yeah, we believe marriage is between one woman and one man. For life. For life. Yeah, and so without that, our whole, like, we we need to address this issue at least during one episode here. And so there's implications there. So if you embrace the idea that you're a woman made in the image of God by his design, Mm -hmm. that will have amazing and vast implications on your role as a a mother, your role mm-hmm. as a wife. Now I'm talking to you here. <laughs> it also, I can say the same for myself. Mm-hmm. Like if I if I know that I'm a man by design, yeah. that that then changes my whole perspective on my my job in terms of how I love and lead you, mm-hmm. love and lead our kids, um, and love and lead wherever the Lord places me. So it's 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 been uh, on our mind so much so that we actually went out and got a, a t-shirt design and got a sweatshirt design. Selena's wearing it here. And one of the- Comfy sweatshirts. Yeah, woman by design is yeah. what it says. If you're not if you're not watching this, uh, you can actually we're going to make those available for pre order. We don't we haven't made those yet because we don't know if, if people are going to want them. So we're going to make them available for pre order at a good price. The best one we can do. These are nice sweatshirts, mm-hmm. so they're not they're not cheap, um, but we think they're worth it and they'll last you a long time. You can go to womanbydesign.us and you'll find how how to pre order those there. There's what there's going to be three different sweatshirt colors and two t shirts. Is that right? 
There's three t-shirts. Anyway, go check that out, womanbydesign.us. <laughs> but we've been mulling this over for quite some time. Yeah. Um, for that reason, because we've often wondered, how can we bring truth in a loving way to address the cultural narrative? Well, of the day? because it's such a, a fiery conversation, right? We can't, um, we can't share the gospel without it offending someone or hurting someone or feeling like they are hated by us. That's kind of just where we're at. We we aren't even able to really have conversations, but we're trying to have those conversations. And so what does that look like as a Christian mm. walking out into the world wearing a shirt like this in a, in a hotbed of lies and shame, uh, everything I think that the enemy mm. would dream up for a society absent of God. Uh, how can we navigate the truth? How can we share the truth wow. uh, boldly and with humility as well? Yeah, when you said lies and shame, yeah, the contrast to that is truth and freedom. Mm -hmm. And one of the lies that our culture, and we as humans, okay, I don't want to just make the culture, this this nebulous culture, right. our <laughs> universal scapegoat. Right. Okay, the problem we have as humans is that we seem to think that we can have freedom when we are completely and utterly, we cast off every restraint. Mm -hmm. There's no freedom without restraint. Mm -hmm. Freedom only comes in Christ, and Christ gives us loving constraints. He gives us the he's he's made us human. He's made us God has made us finite. Mm -hmm. One of those constraints is He has not made me a woman. Mm -hmm. He has not made you a man. Mm -hmm. And that we believe now, when we when we predicate that statement on the the foundational truth of Scripture, it's a beautiful, freeing thing. And you know what was really cool about the Christian faith is nature it just resonates with the 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 voice of god and his mm -hmm. creative uh voice when it went out and said let there be light like it resonates with that we mm -hmm. see his fingerprints throughout creation we see it on ourselves if we are if we have our eyes open to see it and we're ready to give him glory ready to fall in line as the created not the creators mm -hmm. and that's one of the things with our cultural narrative of late is that we ref our human nature again i don't want to use this mm -hmm. scapegoat is to want to be our own god mm -hmm. yeah that we want to be our our, our own uh, masters of our own destiny, mm -hmm. the architects of our future. The center of our universe. The center of the universe. We saw that in the garden when the, the, the enemy said, right. are you sure God said that? Did he really say that? Did he really say? He's just afraid of you right. being like him. <laughs> right? And Eve took the bait. Yeah. And Adam acquiesced. Like he And he abdicated his responsibility and, and went along with it, um, which is really, it's a, that's a whole different topic to talk about. But culturally speaking, the way it's played out is that identity has been, has been, I guess, turned into a threefold um, equation. Right. So it's, it's your, you have your biological sex, which now proponents of this ideology, we do not agree with this. We believe they're all in, interconnected. But uh, people um, that would hold this view say so you have your biological sex, and then there at some level there's the gender identity, which uh, tragically they'll say that some are assigned a gender identity at birth, that happens to match their biological sex, mm. okay? And they would make an argument that you shouldn't do that, doctors shouldn't do that. And they, they I think in, in one state, they took sex off the birth certificate. Mm. Or they, I don't know, they, they changed it somehow. And then there's a third aspect of your identity, and that's your sexual orientation. So you've got your biological identity, your emotional identity, your gender identity, or and your sexual identity. Which is? sexual orientation what you prefer yeah what, what do i prefer yeah so i could be a guy but i maybe identify as a woman and i happen to like women so right. i am a you know a trans woman lesbian okay now don't take that out of context please <laughs> and quote <laughs> me saying that there's a context here uh and that that's you know and that's why it's so complicated and that's why it's viewed as very complicated and nuanced and and not only that so it's not just you have a choice between this binary there now there's this whole spectrum of things and it's all around again actualizing your own identity mm -hmm. to where there are schools <laughs> we don't get very political very often and it's because we want to focus on the mission now we think the mission has this cultural moment has forced us into this conversation and that's okay we don't have to okay. be afraid of it I just I, w I want so much to see just married couples just love one another well, love their kids well, and disciple their kids for Christ. That's all. I, that's like all we care about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is part of that well, now. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> but there are schools in I forget where in the U.S. somewhere where uh, there were kids showing up and they weren't they were refusing to engage in conversation because they identified themselves as cats, and so they would instead they would purr, they would meow, they wouldn't answer questions, and the administrators are enabling this sort of behavior. 
cats. Okay, we're not just in in the human realm anymore. Now we've gone into right. the animal kingdom, and you, oh, you wonder man. where this thing. You know that those are very extreme examples, but you just it's no longer a slippery slope. Like we're on it. Like yeah. the, we're we're headed down this. It's not a threat of a slippery slope. Like we are on the slope, headed down. Right. The logic is taking us where it will, and so here we are, uh, people in the marriage and family space, and we wanna we wanna help you, um, kind of put some some stakes in the ground and say this is true and we want to encourage you in that as a woman as a man to say this is truth that god has created me in his image biologically male mm-hmm. biologically female and it, that's a wonderful thing and i can right. love others in while proclaiming that truth right um i just want to make a quick mention like this the, the irony of secular humanism and this movement because secular humanism is basically this idea that man can can be moral and they can uh what self-fulfilled self-fulfilled fulfillment in themselves without god without god and so and that tends to lend itself to a very materialistic rationalistic worldview um meaning that if i can't see it feel it hear it touch it taste it it's not real except for in this area in this space (laughs) um and the 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 uh the taking away or the separation of a physical corporeal body and the spiritual self is something that uh it's so ironically happening because we we are so quick to dismiss anything other than what I can ex- experience and right. touch. Um, but that is nothing new. Here's the good news. So the, it's not the good news, but the the, uh, the the oldest heresy, like in the New Testament, goes all the way back. It's the Gnostics, right? And John, in his gospel, in his prologue, he is addressing the Gnostics, which the Gnostics believed that basically everything material is evil. And that true spiritual out- enlightenment, true spirituality, salvation comes from kind of this light within. And if you read John's prologue, it's specific. It's very uh, uh, prevalent and, and easy to see. I'll say in the Greek when you look at it, how he juxtaposes things and he makes this argument and he lays it all out in the Greek. He's talking about the light of man came. Like Jesus came, he was the light of man. John was not the light, but he was only bearing testimony to the light. Mm-hmm. And then, so right then, if you're Gnostic, you're reading that saying, "Yes, yes, yes, the Savior that we've all been waiting for. Of course, he's going to be filled with light. Of course, he's the light of man. Of course, he was." Uh, around before the beginning of time and of course yes 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 and amen and then John just bait and switch he says and the light became flesh and tabernacled among us and and dwelled among us Mm. right and so the Gnostic is then just hitting the brakes and what he became flesh how could the savior of the world condescend Mm. and become flesh so in the Christian worldview there is no separation between Mm. my body and my soul Mm -hmm. right uh, Our bodies are temples, and they are temporary yes. beings and Not only for this earth. They but are temporary and eternal, because yes. in, the new, in the new creation, we will have new resurrected bodies. Right. And it's not, am, am I going to look different? Am I, is this body a throwaway body? <laughs> or is it a body that will be redeemed and resurrected? Right. Well, we will be able to recognize one another, so I imagine that there will be similar attributes of what yeah. you look like. I mean, it, it was, was, did Christ throw away his body? Like, no, he, his body resurrected with him christ you know in the flesh ascended into heaven Mm -hmm. and so uh there's a lot of implications if we don't understand the christian view of identity and of self and of uh the doctrine of man what it means to be made in the image of god and Mm -hmm. why we should embrace that now that's from a, a broad standpoint this has trickle down effects on how i view my role as a husband right how i view my role as a father same for you as a as a wife and a mother um so we've kind of gone through what the narrative is, mm-hmm. the Gnosticism thing, the John thing. Um, now, how can we respond as image bearers of Christ? Um, the first one is knowing who we are. Mm-hmm. Do you want to read this verse? It's uh, Isaiah 45, um, verse 9. I just love this passage. Uh, Woe to him who strives with him who formed him, a pot among earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or your work has no handles. Mm. So this is Isaiah talking um, about the, basically the, 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 the creative sovereignty of God. Mm-hmm. Right? Who are we as the created to look up at our creator and says, what have you done? You made a mistake. Mm. Right, another translation says it like this. Uh, you read the ESV version, which is, woe to him who strives with him who formed him. Mm-hmm. The Berean version says, woe to him who quarrels with his maker. Mm. The King James Version is just so poetic. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Mm. Right? Uh, what hubris 
for us to shake our fist at God and say, uh, not only do you not exist, not only that, but I am, in fact, God. And by the way, you made a huge mistake in the way that you made me. Hmm. And I need to set right the things you did wrong. Woe to us, Whoa. those who striveth against our maker. Hmm. Um, I, I, there's other passages here um, that we'll get to. But it comes back to this big question is, what is the chief end of man? Mm-hmm. Which comes from the Westminster Shorter Catechism. And the chief end of man is this. What is it, Selena? <laughs> to glorify God and enjoy him forever. To glorify God and enjoy him forever. Yeah. And so if we are pushing against that, and, and this is the trick, is I believe this is such a foundational issue that even believers who would say that they affirm Scripture, they affirm that God is God. But if we refuse to acknowledge this aspect of his created order mm-hmm. we're not functionally believing what we say we believe mm-hmm. we're believing something else yeah that god created a mis- he, he made us with a you know he made a mistake <laughs> and here's the thing with the, with the male female thing he didn't just make a mistake with me everything was a mistake everything was a mistake and I, I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to say that to God. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. So uh, this is the truth that we are standing on, is that we we believe that God is a creator. He has a created order. He has made it. He called it good. Okay. There, notice there were male and female in the garden before the fall. So we can't just blame that thing on the fall. No, mm-hmm. it was there before the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what we're standing on. But now how do we share this? With, with others. And that's one of the reasons why we went ahead and created this, the sweatshirts, or these sweatshirts and the, the shirts and whatnot, is specifically because I feel like women and girls are under attack. By the way, there are girl by design shirts as well. You'll see those when you go to the site. Because um, we have three daughters and we want to make sure they know that <laughs> you're a girl because God said he's going to make you a girl and it's wonderful. And own it. It's good. Um, and so how, how do we, so yeah, that's what I was going to say. We share, we created the shirts so that you, you it would give you a way to, to make the statement without being in your face, but it's also something that you are going to say proudly, knowing that truth, truth it's is not, good and truth is God. Yeah, we don't have to shy away from it. I think that we can humbly, I have a friend, Mary, who just always speaks the truth, and I'm just never offended by it because she's just, I don't know, she's so humble and so confident in what she says, what she believes, and she knows scripture, which again, it, it's an account to, mm. are we in God's word daily? Are we knowing him? If we are drowning in this, this the narrative and, and the sin of putting ourselves at the center of our universe, then we need to go back to the Lord and repent, and we need to get back in his word. We need to go to the feet of Jesus daily uh, and understand that there is a purpose in his design. And outside of that, apart from christ there's death Mm -hmm. and so we have to embrace we can embrace that purpose of i can embrace that purpose of being a woman being a wife and i can share that truth with others so romans 9 19 we're going to read this verse and talk about it real quickly okay you will say to me then why does he still find fault who can resist his will but who are you O man to answer back to god well what is molded say to its molder why have you made me like this Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory? So Paul is making a theological case here for God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And at some point near here, he references Pharaoh Pharaoh. and how, you know, a a vessel destined for wrath. Now, this is going to bristle a lot of theological feathers. And there's still very charitable debate happening around what this passage is saying and the implications it has for the sovereignty of God and the will of man. Mm -hmm. Um, But for today, we are looking specifically at verse 20. It says, but who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder, why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump? Basically, whatever he wishes to make out of it. So we're we're establishing that God is sovereign. He has made us this way with a purpose, a design. Mm -hmm. And it's better for us and for human flourishing for us to press into that design and Mm -hmm. not rebel from it, not reject it. Right, to embrace it. Embrace it. And so, and, and the implications go are far and wide. Here we're talking about, a li- we're going to talk next about as a mother, 
as a father, as a husband, as a wife. So foundationally, how does this truth that God has created us the way he wanted us to be? That's that's at the end, that's at the bottom line of this. Mm-hmm. Male, female, like whatever race, whatever body type, whatever you look like, wherever you came from, God mm-hmm. created you the way he wanted to create you. And that wasn't arbitrary, it wasn't a mistake. When we embrace that big, big truth, then it has huge implications on me as a, as a husband, as a, as a father. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some of those implications? I think if you just look at your, your roles, I mean, beginning with the roles of yeah. husband and wife, right? I am the helper. You are the spiritual head of the household. Mm. Um, he's given us those roles on purpose, again, with purpose. There's And it's not just the here and now and to make me happy and to make me look great as a good Christian wife. No, the eternal purpose is for us to, uh, again, share and teach those to our children. So then it continues and continues until Christ comes again to mm. reign. But that the headship and helper uh, roles and responsibilities cannot function fully and correctly into the glory of God if we don't first embrace that I am a woman made in God's image. I am not pieced apart. My, my emotions are not um, disconnected from my physical body. Like I am not all of these pieces put together. Like I am a, a whole human being. The, the trouble is this conversation gets um, very vast very quickly. Mm-hmm. And so especially when we're talking around marriage and parenting, because what are the roles of a father and a husband? It goes, it, and those are long conversations to have because there's a lot to be said really good stuff it's not that complicated it just needs to be said and so i think for this conversation there's the main point is that this is something worth thinking carefully about and acting intentionally about Mm -hmm. the very fabric of our society stands on these truths Mm -hmm. so it's worth speaking out it doesn't mean okay boldness is good Mm -hmm. belligerence not so good Mm -hmm. so we made this sweatshirt design. Selena's going to wear it. We're all really excited about it. T-shirts, kid shirts, all that kind of stuff. And it's going to come with some pushback. caveats. And it's going to come with some pushback, mm-hmm. right? And we want you to wear it with wisdom because we want you to be bold. We want you to own your role. Like you're, you, We want you to own the fact that your creator made you mm-hmm. and that he made you the way he intended. Mm-hmm. We want you to own that. And we want you to feel good with that and, and, and to not feel ashamed of that or feel like you have to kind of acquiesce to the cultural narrative. Right. But we also want to encourage you to be wise in that. Like if you have a relative who's struggling with gender dysphoria, mm-hmm. that person needs love. That person needs care. Mm-hmm. They probably don't need to see you wearing this, right? This shirt if you're going to go have dinner with that person. Right. So you want to wear wisdom if you think it's going to offend them, right? They might need to see. It depends on your discernment, your relationship with them. But we just want to encourage you to be wise in that and not try to just it's not a middle finger up to the world. It's not what no, we're trying to say. It's a, it's a, let's it's, shine some light yes. and truth in this dark world that cannot That's what it is, yeah. see, uh, that is confused, that is hurting, that is in bondage, that is living under guilt and shame yeah. and they don't know it yet. And so let's bring truth because only can, when you bring truth, can healing um, really have a chance and for God to really kind of get a hold of their heart. And we can be okay with some resistance and pushback and we can, it's okay to say, I, I, I believe this and I know that you don't and that's okay. Like we don't have to defend ourselves, right? We are in Christ Mm -hmm. and as believers, yes, we want others to be brought into the fold. We want them to be saved from an eternity of hell and damnation, but we are not going to stand here and compromise on what is truth because this is truth that we are. I am a woman by design uh, created in the image of God. I am biologically uh, a female and you can't take those pieces apart. Like I am who God created me to be. And he is the end all be all. What he says is the end. And there's no more arguing or changing of that. So, and I think in that truth is where you'll find true flourishing. Mm -hmm. True joy is the sooner that we look to look to God Mm -hmm. as God and look to Christ as our savior. That's when we begin to embrace his design. And it's for our joy. It's Mm -hmm. for our good. And it's for his glory. Right. And so that's just our encouragement to you is, is really embrace that. And the hope is that others would embrace it too. Not because we just have an ideology that we want to move forward. It's because we have a God who is a God of truth. And he loves people. And he loves us. And his truth is there because he is, it's it's in, intertwined with who yeah. he is. Yeah. Right. And so truth and love, they go hand in hand because 
they're both aspects of God. Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, we hope this was helpful. It's kind of a, a different episode in that we're talking about something a little bit more out there. There's not like five steps to kind of, you know, fix a problem, but we do hope it gives some clarity and at least gets you thinking about it. And we hope that it has blessed you in some way. Do you have something else you want to say? Um, I just think it's it, that what always helps me when I am fearing or nervous about having hard conversations is just that I don't, I don't have to be afraid and to perpetuate mm-hmm. lies yeah. to someone is not loving. And I want to love the most the way God has asked. That's the only way to love mm-hmm. the most is to love how God defines love and how he uh, leads us to love one another um, as believers and leads us to love uh, unbelievers. Yeah, and here we are responding Mm -hmm. um, to the love of God that we've felt. Yeah, don't be afraid. I just want to say don't be afraid. Be be encouraged. Yeah, and we are here to tell you, and this is the whole point of this, okay? The whole point of this is just to encourage you to stand firm. Mm -hmm. Stand firm as a man. Stand firm as a woman. Stand firm as the wife, mother, father, husband, whoever God has created you to be, stand firm and just just hold your post. Mm-hmm. And do so not, excuse my language, but not as a middle finger to the world, but as a reminder to the world that there is a creator God behind mm-hmm. this and he is loving and, and you are, and you are uh, willfully allowing him to be God. Mm-hmm. And, and, wanting to shine the light of his truth into these dark spaces of the world and so when you wife mother when you wear a sweatshirt like what selena's got on here we want that to be a a a statement to yourself that's i'm going to stand firm i'm going to i'm going to own this part of god's creation i think it's a reflection of your beliefs and your convictions it's a reflection of who god Mm. made you to be and we don't have to be afraid of that. We don't have to sheepishly be in our posts. We don't have to belligerently be at our posts, but we need to steadfastly uh, be sustained mm. by God's grace and goodness and love uh, and be faithful at our post that he's given Amen. us. Amen. Faithfulness. That's it. That's the life of a believer. Mm-hmm. Faithfulness, trust, believing, repenting and believing, repenting and believing, and being mm. faithful in the, in, in the things that God has put in our hands to do. And that starts with the very person he's created you and designed you to be. Mm-hmm. Let's own that, and let's give God glory as a result. Selena, why don't you pray us out today? Okay. God, thank you that you've made us in your image and that we do not have to fear man that can destroy the body. We can just trust in you, our Mm -hmm. holy God, preserver of mind, body, soul, heart, uh, the fabric of our being. You knit every part of us together, and we trust you. We trust your created design. God, may we be lights in a dark world, um, shining your love and your goodness to all around us. Thank you that we do not have to fear, that we can walk in boldness. Thank you that we do not have to have something to prove and walk in pride and arrogance, but we can walk in humility. Um, Jesus, that you came and modeled that Mm -hmm. for us and to us. And God, that you loved us so much that you sent him for us, your very own. May we rest in the news that is good of the gospel, Mm. that we are saved. May we live out of that joy and security. God, that you are our salvation. Mm. We pray for people struggling to know who they are or how they are or what purpose they have. Lord, I pray that they would find it in you and that we as believers would not shrink back from these conversations, but we would be emboldened and we would be given wisdom and you would prepare us. And you would give us everything that we need to be sufficient image bearers uh, for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, just as a reminder, um, we're going to make that available for pre-order. It's womanbydesign.us. Check that out. Uh, We hope that it um, becomes kind of a a beacon of light Mm -hmm. in your life and in your community. Not just a political statement, but a statement that God made me Mm -hmm. in his image. And I'm okay with that. More than okay with that. I'm excited, I, I'm excited that. about that. So yeah, I'm um, check that out. And I guess that's that's it. So this episode of the Fierce Marriage, Fierce Parenting podcast is they're all in the cans. They're all in the cans. <laughs> we'll see you again in about seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce.